Okay, we'd like to open up the finance committee and select board meeting um, for today, April, Thursday, April 13th. Um, today's meeting will involve um, personnel committee recommendations as well as capital planning. Um, and around the table at tonight's meeting, we have, could you please introduce yourselves? Donna Wiley. Dan Gary. Jim Kirkendall. Brenda Doherty. Paul Antea. Fred Barron. Julie Wagoner. And listening remotely, we have Joyce Palmer Fortune and we have Keith Bodwell. Anyone else? No? It looks good. Okay, very good. Uh, tonight's meeting, we will begin with the um, reviewing the minutes from April 4th. Um, Prior to that, I'd like to just put this out to the finance committee. At the end of that meeting, we had a very brief discussion on a letter that came from Lynn Sibley to everybody on the committee, both of us. Uh, what I'd like to do is put on our agenda for our next meeting to go into that letter more in depth. <clears throat> and to have a better discussion on it and um, to flush it out that way. Um, and because I notice in here that um, in these minutes, there's something that has escaped me, is that Brenda requested that the committee discuss a letter from Lynn Sibley, which we did, but we didn't give it enough time. The committee agreed to acknowledge receipt of the letter to include the letter in the meeting minutes. So in order to do that, in order to feel comfortable with it, let's have a discussion. So is everybody, do we feel comfortable with that, Fincom? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, that's good. Now, um, let's go to the actual minutes themselves. Has one, everyone had a chance to read them? One correction. Yep. I was not present at last week's meeting, so I removed my name from the folks present and remove me from approving the minutes as well, please. Yep. Okay. Very good. <clears throat> okay. So for the minutes, let me see. All right, Miss, do I have a motion? I make a motion to accept as amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That's good. We'll get that out. Okay. Next on the agenda. We have discussed the recommendation from the personnel committee, and we will do that first. So let's take a look at that, and let's take it um, one at a time. I think would be the best approach. Do we do we have agreement on that? I keep looking over here. Tommy's not here. Okay, um, you get you guys good. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at a um, a, mem a memorandum. This is what I'm referring to. A memorandum uh, from Brian, our town administrator, to both the select board and the finance committee. And it's titled FY24 Additional Wage Adjust Adjustment Recommendations. Okay. So the first one we shall take is. The treasurer collector. Um, the increase would be $9,688. And just let me back up for a second um, with each of these. And as we roll through this meeting, I will put it on the floor. I will open it up to each individual around this table to either a question or a comment. And following that, I will address it. Um, and then we will take a vote if we can and if need be. Okay, so the first one again is the treasurer collector and the increase um, from $29.36 an hour to $34 an hour and to increase the weekly hours from 30 hours to 33 hours to increase um, that pay by $9,000. $688, is that right, Brian? Are we still there? Okay. All right, I will open it up to the floor to any questions or comments regarding that specifically. Okay. 
Okay. I have none. None? Okay. This side, Julie, Fred? No. Brenda? Okay. Donna? No, not on that specific. Okay. No questions. Okay. Um, so we're moving um, to increase the salary by about $10,000. Okay. Uh, who do we have here from the personnel committee? Uh, we have um, the um, Keith and Joyce. Keith's here and Joyce. Okay. Um, let's give us, could you please give us in snapshot your rationale from taking a position? Forget the, there, uh, there will be no mention of individuals. This is roles only. This is not anything more than that. So we have the role of treasurer collector who has been manned by a person who has incredible um, experience, knowledge in the job, has been there for a very long time. And we want to move that. We want to increase that by $10,000 a year for a new individual who has to be trained. So give me your rationale for recommending this number. Well, I'll I'll speak on that to start with. And if Joyce, if Tom isn't there, so I take it. Tom's not here, Tom. No. Okay, so Joyce and I can put work on that. And so basically what I can tell you is that that the information that was presented to us, um, our committee felt justified in, in doing so. Um, I don't have all that in front of me. I thought it was also shared with, with the finance committee, but um, it, again, it goes and it even stems back further in history with the, the outgoing person in regards to trying to present this exact same, a lot of the exact same things. Um, some of the things in our comparison of our towns, there are definitely major differences with some of the things in collect in how they how that position operates compared to some of the other towns that we were comparing to. So again, with the information that was presented, our committee felt justified in voting in favor of that. Yeah, and maybe to fill in a little bit on that, um, the information that was presented was basically a detailed comparison of job duties for treasurer collectors in some of our comparable towns. And um, those whose duties matched our treasurer collectors most closely. And ours have a lot of duties compared to some of the other comparable towns. Um, we're actually paid much more than what we're proposing. And so the person proposing said, well, I'm new at this, so I would expect maybe not to get the same as these highest paid, very experienced, and, uh, and people who do comparable work. So um, that's what was in the information. And I don't have the names of the towns. There was one town that had a very high rate, and she said, I just tossed that one out when I was considering it. It was kind of abnormally high. And uh, and I think her argument was compelling. And I think we do ask a lot of our treasurer collector compared to other towns. Um, and that's why we did it. If I can add something, it also represents a 10% increase in the number of hours being worked. Okay. Treasurer collector is going from 30 to 33 hours a week that's included in this. Mm -hmm. That does not affect the rate. Well, no, it affects the bottom line total number. Yeah. Yeah. The, the nine thousand six hundred eighty-eight dollar increase. Um. I have so, a quick question. Sure. Yes, sorry, Paul. Um, I have a quick question on the nine thousand six hundred eighty-eight. There are a lot of pages of information, and I don't know how to make it come out to nine thousand six hundred eighty-eight. The bottom of the letter 
Uh, it's just after the cover page says the treasure collector position is 45,800 per year. The additional increase will bring the position to 53,000, which is not 9,688. There's, there's also an increase in the assistant, which falls into that office. Yeah. But this is for, the I believe, the treasurer collector's office. Not simply the treasurer collector. Okay, so the treasurer collector number 9688 is for the treasurer of collector office. Not Brian, is that correct? Um, um, Brian, we've got to get a look. We need to know. Yeah, it's up to seven thousand two hundred dollars difference. Seven thousand two hundred dollars difference, and I just plus the extra hours. Uh, is that that's what it is? is the extra yeah, hours. hours that makes it that? Okay, okay so they're difference. really asking the, the position. So we're going thirty three hours. Seven thousand two hundred dollar raise, and then additional hours at the new rate. Okay. Right, that would be the total increase to the budget. Got it. And I'll I'll just I'll just add for what it's worth from 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 my point of view is you know these positions are getting harder and harder to fill. Yep. Um, when we were when we were advertising um, for the position, we had very few applicants, and there's still a lot of job postings now for all sorts of municipal finance people, um, and one of the one of the jobs that we were competing against was Belchertown with the starting with a full-time starting salary of seventy-seven thousand, um, and that's that's common for the bigger towns. So we'll, we'll always fight the bigger towns for people, always, right? Oh, we always will. Um, but there's there's such a shortage of of municipal finance people that it's getting harder and harder to fill these fill these positions. Yeah. So there's sort of, there really is a. Mm -hmm. A deficit in the labor market in terms of filling these positions. So um, that's just sort of the background of what we went through to fill the position. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Just a point of clarification. In general, the town does not determine wages and salaries based on experience. Is that a correct statement? In most positions, that's true. There are a couple positions like we have in the highway department where there's <clears throat> zero to three, then three plus in terms of operator labor, and four senior up, and then um, you know, senior operator. But other than that, no. Okay. okay. <clears throat> then we will, um, the finance committee will vote on this. It's just the select board will not, um, they can vote on their own, obviously. Um, so I will, regarding the treasurer collector position, are we in favor of increasing this by set amount? I'll start with Don. Uh, will you allow me a diversion? Will you allow me a diversion for, for context? Sure. Um, well, so this is my second year on this committee. and. One of the things that uh, took me by surprise last year, but maybe more so this year because this is a more difficult budget year, is that the role of the finance committee is to balance very good recommendations generally from a lot of different parts of the town against what we think the town can afford. In other words, what we think the residents can absorb in terms of property tax increase, because that's it pretty much. Pretty much. Um, I have been surprised that our practice for considering personnel adjustments have been surprised in two different ways. One is that we consider individual market adjustments, each one on its merits. We consider requests for additional time, and we consider cost of living adjustments. And we tend to think about those as though they are three different things, whereas in my ancient many, many years of experience, many places think of compensation and how much can we afford, and then we're backwards into what we can. What makes sense? Right. Um, so I have found that challenging. Um, one, of, 
one of the things that I asked Brian to help with, who did a brilliant job when he has no time at all this week, was simply because I know there have been a lot of changes in the town office situation in the last few years, to just do a schematic about how many hours we have of people working in the town offices each year. And that's this pretty little green chart. Got it. Um, and the results are neither good nor bad. But what it tells me, I'm taking out the hand, the hand the job, the technical community development job, because we proved in one year that if we bide our time and hire the right person, we will get more money than we pay for that job. It's just a really easy one to compare. It doesn't mean it's more important. I just think it would be unfair. Um, with that out, um, the hours in the town offices have grown by between nine and 10% over five years. Um, again, I don't think that's good or bad. It may not be enough time yet, but I don't think, I, I haven't heard any discussion of that. And mm -hmm. it's sort of easy to have that happen when you have two hours here, three hours here, six hours there, you know, what's the net right. or, or the gross rather increase. Um, all right, I think I'm finished <laughs> with those remarks. Okay. Um, are we voting yes or no? There is no midpoint. In we are voting yes or no on sure. that treasurer collector sure. position change. In two parts of it. I would vote no on the two parts of it then. On um, the, if we are voting simultaneously on the salary increase and the additional hours, I would vote no. Okay. Would you make a recommendation? as to which part of those you would what is your recommendation what is my recommendation yeah. my yeah. recommendation would be to keep the hours the same and and come to some midpoint on the salary increase between the current and the increase and the recommended knowing that we will have a chance to talk about this again next year mm -hmm. okay we can we will have this is not our last meeting. Anything on the table can be tabled to another meeting, meeting downstream um, to a point. Right, Brian? Yeah. To a point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, just for clarification purposes, mm -hmm. um, the April 18th is the next scheduled meeting. Right. Um, likely, this will. If every, you know, the select board will would hopefully sign the warrant on May 9th. So there's time for additional meetings if we need them. Okay. So I mean, I mean, at, at the end of the day, for the treasure collector budget, right? Mm -hmm. We need a we need a bottom line number right that go, that goes into budget yeah so um that's sort of our, our our task here this is one way to you know to go about it but at the end of the day we need a bottom line number that for the treasure collector budget mm -hmm. okay um Donna, can i ask you a question yeah sure um when you say right away when your name starts with w you get to go once <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's go. We, we have all night. Yes, sir. Um, when when you say um, that the hours have increased, do you mean that those are unpaid hours or that no, the no, hours have increased hours. and then they are being paid yeah. hours? Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So this is an hourly position. It's paid hourly, although we are talking about salary. What we mean is an hourly position. I, I think that's not relevant to the calculation. Because I mean, even Brian is up here in this little chart is 40 hours a week because I mean, Brian is salary, but it's budgeted at 40 hours. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm... Okay. So um, we have one no um, that can be um, that can be looked at separately between hours and rate okay um donna does not feel like she can vote yes on the um on the hours increase um and um 
look, when you sign up for the finance committee, whether you like it or not, you're, you're a data-driven person, okay? You want to see numbers. If you don't want to see emotions, you don't want people to come and say, well, I think this could be, and you know, we really need, and it would be nice. All of those, all that soft stuff, right out the window. When there's data that we can put our hands on and look at and say, yeah, that makes sense. Then it makes it makes our job far more um, palatable and easier to come up with um, a, a field for it. So I understand we go from 30 to 33 hours why the three hours? What is what is documented that would require another to go from thirty to thirty-three hours? What where is the documentation for that? Other than well, we got these bills, we got that bills, we got to do this, we got to do that. Gotcha. Okay, but um, that's soft. Okay, it may be real. It is soft because it's not a data driven outcome. So we got one zone. Dan, I understand the salary increase and I go for it. And uh, I do tend to agree with you on the hourly wage or the hours that they put in because there was nothing said about that that I know of as to why the increase was needed which is something we should have. Right. If in fact, Lynn Sibley, she did this job, she had a list, she had a job description, she had roles. Now, if this new role um, has a, a, a more extensive job description, you, you know, Lynn had to do five things, the new person has got to do 10. Okay, I get it. You know, but short of that, it's very difficult for us to say um, that we back that number, at least for the first two. Jim. I have to ask a question. Ryan, does data exist that Lynn worked more than 30 hours on a consistent basis? And is there any evidence that 33 hours is necessary based on historical data so is it documented that she worked for the 30 hours i don't know i know that she worked more than 30 hours but that's not documented um you know part of the reason is for the increase is related to is related to customer service right it's mm -hmm. It's someone's going to be at the window mm -hmm. when somebody wants to come do it. Yeah. When somebody wants to come and has a question or wants mm -hmm. has a phone call or something. So the, it was a great benefit to the town when Lynn was both the town clerk and the treasurer collector. Okay. Because you had one person who fulfilled both roles and could fulfill both duties, no matter what, no matter what the issue was or the matter that the, the resident came to do. Lynn was there and she could do both. Gotcha. Well, well, Lynn's, I was going to say Lynn's not here anymore, but she's still here in some role. But the positions are split now. Um, so the additional hours would allow for that customer service to be you know, mm -hmm. to, um, to cover the hours that were listed in there, essentially yeah. Monday through Thursday. So that when a resident came during those times, they were able to you know, transact business with the treasurer. No. It just leads me to another question, which I are always assumed to be so. But you know, when you assume things, what happens? Is there a clock in there where people punch in and out? No, there's not time cards. No time cards. So, okay. There are time sheets, but there are not right. time cards. Okay. So, and who goes over the time sheets? Um, so the payroll person goes over them and then I look at them when we look at the warrants and then this sweat board chairperson signs the warrants. Okay. All right. Well, there's some accounting of that. So you know when Lynn left and when well, obviously when she came in. My only point is to document 
that these additional hours are this data to back them back up the request. Can we publish to the public hours that accommodate the 30 hour work week versus a 33 hour work week without significantly jeopardizing service? Um, I'm probably not the best person to answer that question. There are, it's good, it ebbs and flows depending on what the business of the town is, is happening, right? If if taxes are due, then it's very busy. Um, and people are coming in and in, in paying. If it's, you know, a time when, when they're not due, it, it's less busy. Uh, that's in terms of the customer service aspect of it. There's still a ton of work that has to do behind the scenes. It's, you know, it's a it's the, the dual position of, of treasurer and collector that it somehow is split with the two different people. Um, so we could advertise whatever hours by office, and we, we do that for the assessors. And so, yes, we could advertise those. Um, okay, with that in mind, I cannot approve the 33 hour work week. I will agree to say yes to the $34 an hour increase. No, I said okay. Brenda? So I must be misunderstanding. We're not doing a bifurcated vote. We have a nine thousand something increase in budget, right? Nine thousand six hundred and eighty-eight increase in budget. It might be thirty hours or thirty-three hours in future years. This is the justification for that increase is three extra hours plus the bump in pay. Is that what we're right now? What we have on what we're looking at, we actually do have a bifurcated. Um, uh, number on the table. We have a, a number for hours, and we have a number for an hourly rate, which is obviously what we're looking at now. We're looking at an hourly rate, and we're looking at right now we have 30 hours a week. Um, you feel comfortable with 30, you feel comfortable with 30, you feel comfortable with 30. And with all three feel comfortable with the rate of $34, which to you. Okay, so I thought we were just increasing the budget and how it gets broken down in future years. I don't really think we have the power to say how they three extra hours a week. But anyway, in any event, I am comfortable with the increase in the rate in order, in order to be, you know, in conformity with growth. So we have four. We don't have a number, but we have four that say the rate. Right. Okay. So we have four individuals. Um, I am also in line. Um, I feel comfortable with the rate increase. And I feel that holding it to 30 and then documenting as to why we need, why that position needs more hours. And once that documentation is there and we can see it, um, we can visit that again. Yes? Okay. That's the decision on treasurer collecting. Are you guys gonna um are you guys gonna do a vote all at the end as to what you discussed? Or are you gonna because there should be probably a motion in a in a second and then a vote? We shall do that right now. Would somebody like to make that motion. I made a motion we accept the dollar increase of 29, 30, 30, up to thirty-four dollars an hour. But abstain from increasing the hours from 30 to 33. From 33 to 30. 30 to 33, yeah. Okay. Um, I say take a vote on that. Jim, you got a second? Let's have a vote. Um, yes. Brenda? Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. Yes. Okay, so that's the unanimous um, there. And as we said, if the data shows that three hours more, five hours more are needed because the work is there and there is documentation that the person is coming in at a certain time and leaving at a certain time, that's what you need. Amy? Hi. Hi. Amy Schrader, treasurer collector. Um, I'm very confused by this. So next week, am I working 30 or 33? Because I'm pretty sure. 
that at a personnel committee meeting, it was recommended for the 33 increase. And then the select board meeting, it was also recommended in the 33, a 33 hour increase. So I've been working 33 hours. Um, so if it's, I, who is the um, approving authority? I'm, I don't, I'm very confused. That's, it's, it's an excellent question. All we're saying is we are the authority in town to present a recommended budget to the town. So, it's, so these no these votes are for recommendation correct. on these correct meeting one. Absolutely. Okay. That's all it is, Jeff. So the change, if there is a change, mm -hmm. it would happen July 1st of 2023. Exactly. Thank you very much. Exactly. Okay. okay. No, so, uh, yes. Brian, you will translate that into a number to plug into the budget. Yes. Yeah. So, so what they're deciding on is is a number for the treasury collected budget for FY twenty four. Right. But for the purposes of approving the full budget next week or whenever, that that right. right. The new number will replace a new number. There will the ninety six eighty eight. Okay. No. Um, may I ask a point of clarification? That follows from Amy's very good question. So, I think what I just heard Amy say is that the the select board probably with a recommendation from the personnel committee has the authority to make a mid-year change. Um, no? no I, I, my understanding was that that request of an hourly increase would be going to the personnel committee and the select board. But then I right. understand that you guys are voting on the overall budget, which sure. reflects the 33 hour increase. Mm -hmm. So it would be basically a, a, a how I'm understanding the process. We're discussing fiscal year 24. Yes. 24. Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's not to be, I mean, we do have other funds and we do have funds that if, you know, data is there to show that you absolutely needed those three hours more. Okay. You know, I, but yeah. the data has to be there. Um, but for right now, I, we don't see that. And this is only from a dollar perspective. It's only for a finance perspective. And it's only for the number that was what, what, that will go on to the warrant to be recommended to the town. So, um, and anything can be amended on town floor. That's what we have. That's that's the system we have. So um, that's the way it is. Okay. All right. We we'll get that done. Uh, only two hours on that. I wasn't bad. Um, okay. We shall now move to the second addition wage and salary adjustment, which is fire chief. Now. Um, I do have some supporting. Uh, okay, hang hang on a second. Um, we have a member of the finance committee that must leave the room um, and cannot take part in the vote, primarily because, well, he's the father of <laughs> perspective of the new strategy. So to uh, to go along with state law and. What the town attorney has to say, that's what has to happen. So, and that's why we have the policeman in the room back to make sure he doesn't rush in. And okay, all right, so all right, two minutes. Okay, two minutes. Okay, okay, so we have a uh, so we have a, a request um, for the new fire chief and the request is for a $21,000 increase in salary. So I open it up to the floor first, because there will be some questions and you may have those answers in your lap, I don't know. Um, so we'll open it up to the floor for questions from the finance committee, as well as the select board. I know the select board's approved it, but the select board is here, and they could add their um, their expertise to the conversation. 
Do we have any questions? Have any comments? Sure, I'll start. Sure. Okay, Joyce. Um, one of the most compelling pieces of data that he showed us was a list of towns, uh, quite a comprehensive list of towns, similar in uh, population to ours, and uh, what they were doing for fire chief. And many, many, many just had a stipend with no number of hours per week. And um, who knows what the hourly rate is then? Because who knows, you know, nobody's keeping track of this person's hours. So there's a lot of towns where it's just unknown, but there's some sort of $5,000, $10,000 stipend. And we were one of those towns. We still are, technically. Um, then other towns had had what I would call like a chief, fire, chief, of, chief blah, blah, fire chief who really had hours specified were all making in the 33 to 35 dollar an hour range um this guy came in and said i should probably start lower than that he proposed 30 dollars an hour and 20 hours a week and gave us a two-page list of things that really need to be done in waitley some of which are being done many of which are not being done and things that we should be doing that would probably take somebody 40, 40 hours a week. So it seems to me this is a chance for us to have, uh, I don't know, a stepwise improvement in our fire department. And I think it will pay off in terms of better training. It will pay off in terms of, at some point, lives saved, property saved. Uh, I think it will pay off in terms of better cooperation uh, between fire and police. Um, I think we sort of had a good deal there for a while with John, but honestly, if he's 20 hours a week, he was getting paid $10 an hour and that is not legal. So this guy will not be paid when he's on call. That comes out of his 20 hours a week. So part of that jump in salary should be offset, not completely, but at least partially, by less salary paid when he's on call. Like he won't be, he won't be picking up additional hours. And our current fire chief did pick up additional hours whenever there was a call. So um, I feel like between the data he showed and the do list of things that we really are required to do by law, and maybe we're not quite doing all of those. I think we should do it. I think this is a great way to get, just reach kind of the next step professionally in our fire department. Okay. So any other comments or questions, Jim? Could someone explain the do list then that uh, we are doing right that we should be doing? You want me to, can I hand these out or? Sure. Okay. Sure. That's the, thank you. Right, with the um, all go over. Okay. We got to get the better right now. Thank you. You want me to uh, expand upon any of these things that are highlighted, or I can just kind of give you a quick rundown that the things. Just that give I, us a nice um, thumbnail okay. overview of uh, the, the things that are listed in red. Yeah, are things that I see as imperative um, to the department. So either they're critical life safety things for the firefighters or for the public, or they're mandated by law. Um, so the reporting um, and the ASHRA training, which is an active shooter uh, hospital event response in the pool of the police chief code, uh, very important and it's a mandated thing that we're gonna have to collaborate with the police on um, or OSHA compliance. Um, 
our training. Um, we really have to have good record keeping in our training and have monthly training, um, institute some type of regular training so that so that our firefighters are safer and our public is safer, but also so that if in the extremely unfortunate event that something bad happened in town, but they were to see a casualty or a loss of life um, on the, in the fire service side, then it's going to be investigated. If we can't produce all of this stuff, then it's a major liability to the community. Um, our SOGs, as you know, we're, we're doing the town SOGs as we speak, but the fire department SOGs all need to be um, updated. Um, and the other stuff is fairly self-explanatory, but the um, the training, I just want people to bear in mind that it's not just the hours that we're training in the fire department. If anybody's got experience with academia, you, it takes longer to prepare a good lesson plan than it does to present the lesson. So there's time invested on both sides. Um, the stuff in yellow are things that I think are important and um, very important to the fire department. I wouldn't put them on here, but they're things that are not necessary either for life safety or obligated, you know, by law. And unfortunately, one of the things that, that is on there is um, grant writing, which I've been pretty successful in the last four years. We brought in over $75,000. Um, it's not going to be like that every four years, but, you know, the, there is um, the goals for my coming year kind of run the gamut you know, from day-to-day -day operations to long-term planning. So we're going to do that. Um, and I really want to focus on where the department is needs to go to in the future, um, more so than you know where we were in the past. When John took over, things were a lot different. He's done a lot in the last twenty years, um, but the fire service is changing, and the responsibilities of the position are changing. And you'll see that a lot of Toronto communities are actually going to full time. Sadfield um, did. Um, Leverett is looking at a. Um, I think this year they're looking at full time position. I don't think that we're at that point in Waitley, but we certainly need to put more hours where we can and then and I think what we're doing. Very good. Thank you. Um, questions? Comments? Just one observation. Sure. With Dan having to leave the room, we no longer have a quorum. Yes, he did. Is that yeah, we do. We go four. Oh, was yeah. everyone the yeah. 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 yeah, I count. I, I can't. Thank you. Okay. Um, just let me just, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's what the finance committee recommends on town floor to be put into the warrant. So if you're home right now watching this, which many people are, many voters, many res residents, any taxpayers. Okay. Um, we have a part time volunteer fire department. Correct. Okay. And that fire department, we have our ex chief here. Current chief, so. Right. Um, not yet. Can I say that? Yeah. Can I, yeah. You didn't say that. I don't want to say old chief. I want to say ex chief. Not an extra. Okay. He's still <laughs> fire chief, so June. Okay, still all right. Outgoing um, fire chief. Outgoing. Okay. During your time here in all the fires, how many lives have we lost? Three. Three. How many structures have we lost? Would you say it's complete Two. complete loss? Two. Um, population of Waitley today is 1,500 15. 15 plus minus ish. Oh, it's over 1607. Oh, the 20th century. 1607. When I moved here in 1985, it was 1,300. Okay. So in that time, it's increased by 300 people, a few more buildings. Um, it's unfortunate that ha there has been loss of life. It's unfortunate that ha there has been loss of property. Um, but the degree to which we are protected 
today is very similar to the way we were protected 30 years ago, pretty much. Um, so the question we all have is, why are we paying a new chief who works full-time in another town who's not incentivized to go, who's not financially incentivized <laughs> to go to a fire when working full-time in another town. Um, I think we have to ask ourselves that, okay? Can so I, John, can I speak to any of those? Sir? So John, when you look at this list, what didn't you do? Why don't you take a look at that list that he's got in front of him? What I did. What I did. didn't what didn't you do? I can look again and I don't know. I did I did not specifically inspect the rubber installation. You didn't do what? Could you speak louder because I'm blue blues in my hearing? I, don't don't do that. I did not inspect all your oil burner installations. Okay. And what does that entail? Going to make an appointment and going to everyone's house, getting in their basement and making sure that the installer made it installed it by coke. Okay. All right. Now, if, if a resident called me and said they had it done and wanted me to come, I made the appointment and go and did it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other than that, keep going. What else on this list yes, didn't you do? The, the training has gone by the wayside because, to the best of my knowledge, I can only mandate my people to do first responder training. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's for them. Mm -hmm. I can't get everybody to come. Yep. The, the, the SOGs are on the desk, they need to be updated. We have some pre planning. Uh, electronic databases help me. I don't have a secretary. That would have been a, one of the best things for the fire service. Okay. And I don't have office hours. That's true. Okay. But Whaley Fire Department on on the web page, my phone. That's my personal phone number. Yep. And it, it rings 24 7, mm -hmm. and I'll be happy to answer it. Yep. Don't doubt it. Okay. John, who did you report to as fire chief? Select board. Okay. During your time, any select board member at any time ride with you in a truck? No. Bring you into the office to discuss your role? No. To discuss how. You are performing your role? That's not true. John and I met I'm on at least one occasion while I was on the select board to discuss his job and his performance. There's a performance review every year. I am no longer the fire chief's liaison, but we have met. I haven't had my job evaluated. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree with that, but I've never been brought into a meeting to discuss what I do. Okay. So oversight on the fire chief, and it's not just me, we change so select boards around here. I mean, kind of often, you know, I mean, granted, um, we have every once in a while, you get a Jonathan Edwards that's been around for 18 years, or you get a Joyce that's, you know, been here for a while, but there is change. So this is a generic look at the select board over time. And over time, oversight on fire chief um, has been minimal at best. But with that, we've been pretty safe. I mean, we've been pretty safe, you know, for the most part. Few people, unfortunately. Um, but so it brings back the question to to the whole town. Part-time volunteer increased by $20,000 a year. 
um, for an individual who will not be in town, who will be in another town. Um, so I throw that out there and I'll, I'll throw it back in your lap, JP. I, yeah, I'd love to be able to speak to someone. Go that. ahead. All right. Um, first, I just want to want to clarify that um, statistically, you know, if I if I know that exact numbers that we were looking for, I could have prepared something better from Department of Service statistics, but um, fire doesn't discriminate. Right. It doesn't care whether you're rich or you're poor, whether you're in a big city or a small town. Uh, doesn't care if you're in an apartment building or in a farmhouse. Fire can kill, and when it when it happens, it's devastating. And I don't want to trivialize that. You know, we've only had three fatalities in in the last twenty years. Right. Um, statistically, you know that that number is not great. Um, I I would now, argue I would argue that um, also that. Um, as far as your your danger of fire in a small town, we don't have we're not surrounded by career departments, you know, like a lot of uh, a lot of other communities are. We don't have a career department here. If you have a fire in your home, um, you're going to ask the first three or four people responding to do the work that in a larger community would be done by anywhere from ten to twenty people. So I would argue that. The responsibility and the training threshold would actually be higher in a small community than in a large community because you, you're being asked to do more with less. Um, and the fire danger to the firefighters is the same, regardless of whether you're on a career department or sure. a call volunteer department. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I just wanted to make that that clear. I do a lot of fire safety education, and it's something I take you know very seriously. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as the number of hours go, um, let me back up a little bit to the fact that I don't work in town. It's not that uncommon for our firefighters to not work in town. And in fact, it could be argued that the job of the fire chief isn't to respond to every call. It's to train, which is why training is number one on my list of priorities to train the department to be able to function successfully without the chief being there. Um, the fire chief's job is to get all the pieces to work together and the cohesive process, um, which is also why I'm asking for a stipend increase for the officers because the lieutenants and the captains and the deputy chiefs have significant roles of responsibility. They're responsible for the lives of the crew members that they have with them. And it's it's a pretty serious thing. You're deciding whether or not to go inside of a burning building, sure, or which line to take, you know. Um, it's not inc inconsequential, the decisions that they make. Um, I do take the position very seriously. Um, I'm certainly not doing it for the money. Uh, the $30 an hour is significantly less than my base pay of my career department. And God knows that there's a, a ton of overtime there. Um, there's a nationwide shortage of firefighters, nationwide shortage of paramedics, the shortage of police officers. Um, we can't just fill gaps. Um, when the town advertised for this position, how many applicants did you have, Brian? <clears throat> one um you know it's there's not a lot of people drumming at the door to take on this level of responsibility and it's it's not because they don't want to be chief it's because to be a chief is more than just wearing the badge it means that you're responsible for all of your people and i'm not saying it's something that that chief Hannum doesn't take seriously i'm saying that if i'm going to do it I want to be able to dive headfirst into it and dedicate the resources that I think are needed to bring the department to a level where it's going to be successful, not only today, but into the future. Um, currently, the status of call volunteer fire departments across the country, especially in, in Massachusetts, rural Massachusetts, but nationwide, is in really rough shape. Recruitment and retention is really poor. Um, people don't volunteer like they used to. and 
part of building a department back up to get people interested and get people to volunteer more is to make it um, a more interesting place to work, to educate people better, give people more roles and responsibilities. And that's what a lot of this stuff on this list is all about. It's not just about one position, it's about the department as a whole. And that's really what I want to focus on. So does that help that clarify well, that, some of what that you're certainly, asking? That certainly uh, <clears throat> helps there. Well, yes. Um, thank you. I, I think we're in a little bit of a cart and a horse situation here <laughs> in that the town advertised for this job. I actually went on our website I have no role in that whatsoever. And um, to see the job description, which is still up on the town's website, and which uh, requires 20 hours a week. So I want to go back to Joyce's comment. If part of what we're talking about is, do we really need 20 hours a week for this job? Um, I, I'm not questioning that. But if that is part of the calculation, We've already advertised the job, and I think you've accepted it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we can't we can't pay ten dollars an hour, which is what the stipend, what John's stipend comes back to, and that's what I mean by saying you know we're we're way out over our ski. You know, I'm mixing metaphors, but on this. Um, so, if I'm understanding you correctly. You're saying the job was advertised, the job was accepted. It's a fait accompli. Well, I don't, I don't know. There's nothing on the, what I found on the website about pay. I don't know what conversation was about pay. Right. So I'm not having that. Right. But I, I know that Joyce is correct. It's yeah. a simple math. Yeah. That, it's an excellent you know, question. 20 hours uh, a week at 10 to 2 is right. about $10 an hour. Right. Yeah. So. I had to. <laughs> so if somebody, if somebody was to do the math, yeah. Um, the twenty hours a week certainly sort of red flags for me. Um, we don't have anybody spending any time with John, um, going to fires, you know, seeing what fires are all about, seeing what he has to do in the office. So I. I I just wonder where, John, did you recommend the 20 hours? No. Okay. So where did the 20 hours come from? Can anybody answer that? Nobody's old enough here. The what? Nobody's old enough here. Okay. Um, no, that we advertise. We advertise the job. The job description the job hasn't changed in 20 years. It's in the job description. Yeah. It hasn't changed in 20 years. Okay, so where where does the twenty hours come from? Yes, that's to John's comment. No one's old enough to know when that was put in there. I, I do want to make a distinction between a stipend and a salary. Yeah, there is there is a distinction here, right? Sure. A stipend is, is an additional amount for doing a task, mm -hmm. right? And a salary, in this case, we're talking about an hourly salary. So there's a difference there. Mm -hmm. So stipends aren't necessarily calculated on an hourly basis. Sure. That's the difference. Sure. And it seems that John was able to get money. Uh, you were paid hourly when you went out on the call. Yeah. So that we would add that to the stipend in, in terms of what you were actually paid annually. I know my people get rich being in the party car. I am sure. <laughs> I am sure. I'm just, I'm willing to, you know, compare apples. My captain told you that all the time. <laughs> but it's not necessarily just... ten thousand two hundred to thirty one twenty. It is ten thousand two hundred plus call time right. to thirty one twenty and no right. call time. I'm exactly. glad you mentioned that because that would be yeah. exactly. So what was that stipend? Is it in here? Did I miss it? The stipend. I said it earlier. <laughs> Yeah, Go ahead, Joyce. Tell, yeah I, I think if, if this has been a 20 hour a week job for as long as anybody can remember, I think it's a 20 hour a week job to be the fire chief. Okay. And what's the hour? I, and I understand there's a there's a technical difference between a stipend or not, but if the established number was 20 hours a week before, um, oh, yeah. I don't know if you're I don't know if you're claiming that our our outgoing fire chief has not been working 20 hours a week, but I'm just saying. 
if that's the number we've been using all this time, I don't see a reason to change it unless you've got some data to say that we don't need 20 hours a week. Well, I don't, I mean, I, I just think the onus is on you or whoever is advertising for the job. The onus is not on the finance com committee. The onus is on the individuals who want that, who are, here we got the request again. So if you are so, requesting, then it's your responsibility to produce the data that says that should happen. Well, I think you've got a lot of it right in front of you, but do you require that for any other job that you have to produce the data to show that the job is the number of hours that we've advertised it for, for 20 years? I'm not discussing any other job. I'm discussing this job. This so we'll job see. has been advertised as needing 20 that's hours a week for over 20 years. About this job. No, okay. that's this job. Right. That is this job. Just this job. 20 hours a week. And it's sort and of that's what it's been that's for 20 been. years. So that's what we're gonna use. If, if I can, Paul. Yeah. It's not the job of the finance committee to make policy regarding whether we need a full-time, part-time or stipend absolutely cheap absolutely so i would say it's the job of the finance committee to determine based on the fact that historically and through the select board's policy decisions over the years we're going to have a 20-hour chief what should this salary be or what should we budget towards that salary and I don't think the finance committee is making those decisions. What I think the finance committee is doing is using that explanation to justify an expenditure. And I think that finance committee is well within their purview to ask those kind of questions. I, I think you're within your purview to ask whether it is worth X dollars an hour, but not the number of hours. The number of hours is in the job description. The number of hours is historically not mandated, but established. Yeah. Well, okay. may, I That's ask, sure? may I ask another yes. question, which I think is what Julie was asking a bit ago. I think we've established that in budget terms, which is the finance committee's concern, we would not be moving from 10 to, to 31 to, with this change. Um, I went back through the last three annual reports and very neat way. Um, it, you and John reported just about the calls in each of the last three years, a little tiny little variation. So, I mean, someone presumably knows how many hours the fire chief billed for 80 calls is more than eight minutes, you know, mm -hmm. and how much that costs. And then we would know what we're, you know, what is A and what is B. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Make my make our job easy. So if we knew, obviously John went on calls. Obviously John got paid for those calls. Could you give us a rough estimate? What did that how much how much time each call might take? Most of the calls take an hour. That's one hour? Yeah. Most of them do. Hours, and you were paid $18 an hour. Yeah. Uh, until you get to the call where you go in on 91, or you go to a fatal house fire, it's just, you know, and those go around the clock. Yeah. Okay. So, so the average is probably more than one. So it's a small amount of money. It's under $2,000, 1440. Okay. Do you feel? JP, that you would have the department functional for any fire in town without you being there. That's my goal. Okay. You know, and you can't, it's not something you can snap your fingers and have done, but that's what this is a plan to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the plan of any successful chief isn't to, to be there to mastermind every call. It's to to train your people and to have a plan in place you can practice that plan so that you're successful um, and um you know as far as being out of town i work two 24-hour shifts my regular rotating schedule yep. um, maps out to 42 hours of work a week over eight weeks mm -hmm. um it's not unusual for people to be on the fire department now that work 
outside of town mm -hmm. and the number of people that can leave their jobs right to respond to a fire whether they're working in town or not yep. is pretty small yep. you know we're fortunate we have some people in the highway department but yep. without right right without that yep. um you know, we would be in a tougher spot which comes back to the recruiting and the yep and retention stuff but um you know i would certainly make it a priority to to, to participate in whatever i can for, for now, sure. john were you part of the Amherst Fire Department when you were also chief? No. No. But did you work at the Amherst? You did work for Amherst Fire, right? The day I retired from Amherst, I was sworn in as a fire chief. Okay. Well, it was the next day. I think I retired on the 31st, and I was okay. sworn in on the 2nd or something like that. Okay. So you never had a conflict of interest from that no. perspective. Okay. Um, so which leads me to another question. Where's the fire truck going to, going to be? Yeah. Where's the command vehicle? Fire truck will be in the fire station with the other fire okay. trucks. So it's going to stay there. So the, should you not? The, the fire truck or the no. fire? The, the pickup? The commands. Yeah, the pickup. The pickup. My plan would be to take the pickup home and have okay. it be responsible. Okay. Um, so, okay. Well, that's a new question. Discussion for another day. If um, it's going to get used otherwise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we just we kind of wonder, you know, what the wisdom behind that is at this point. But well, we can talk. Yeah, we can talk about that. Time. So, okay. So we're we're down to um, any final questions or comments from finance committee in regards to this position. Okay, then. We will take a vote and um, we will take a vote for as as is listed here by a chief for an increase of $21,000. Um, and without an hourly um, stipend for buyers. Um, Donna? Yes. Jim? Yes. Brenda? So moved and yes. Yes. All right. Okay. So we need a motion. Oh, that was a lot of I said so moved. Anyway, so moved. Second. All right. So we're, we can do a, a formal vote now. Aye. 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 Okay. We have four eyes. Four. Five chairs. So thank you for letting me okay. respond to some of these things. Well, thank you. thanks for your help. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, you got to understand, we have to go through this. Can't be easy. Can't. It just cannot be easy. Um, I told the select board they wouldn't be doing their job if they didn't ask the yep. tough questions. Yep. You know, there are, um, you know, as we look at our projected um, our uh, projected uh, increase on taxes. Um, we're looking at sixty-eight cents a thousand now. Um, that's 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 a pretty tough one to swallow. I'll tell you. Um, and I I think we may have to. You know, this has gone through. This is the personnel committee. This has gone through. Um, so. Um, but we're definitely going to have to have a meeting where we may have to scale back. And um, that would be the next meeting here. Okay. So, anyway, um, that's that. Our oh, next, um, well, we have the firefighters on here to be determined. Brian? Oh, that that refers to the that next bullet point there. There's a request, right? And it's not you're not changing the overall. Just a request for the, for the chief and uh, not the chief lieutenant, and, but it's a pay differential, right? Right, correct. And without knowing how many calls that they're going to do in the coming year, it's kind of hard to forget. I don't have we don't have access to their individual breakdowns, but it's going to be small enough to be absorbed, I think, into that the overall. Uh, 
one here is is actually that's actually within fiscal year 23 so that was really required discussion but we have the, the memo the other memo did i miss that memo uh, we're moving on so to the dated march, march 15th we're moving back to the march 15th memo so uh, those are the other ones that need to be discussed you know. All right, so it's the March 15th memo must be here somewhere. Thank you. So actually, if we go to page three, the top of page three, we're talking about the wage adjustments. The one that you just talked about, there was a second of snuff in use. That's why that one reads additional wage adjustments and then a short one. So yeah. found it. You found it? Oh. It's, oh, that's it's, it's it, it kind of looks exactly like the other one. That's why. Here we go. Okay. Here it is. Well, I'd suggest we run down that list. Okay. So there we go. And these are uh, these are the more typical minor adjustments that in most cases we're talking about. Okay. Sense. Right. Um, so so we're going down to so we're gonna go from assistant treasurer collector down to uh, increase salary of the highway superintendent. Correct? Yeah. Okay. So let's start with the first one. To increase the hourly wage rate of the assistant treasurer collector from 2522 to 2636 per hour. Any questions? Any comments? Um, the um, so the totals are at the bottom. Isn't that true, Brian? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're voting on an increase of $7,590 for each of these positions. Um, for the combined total. For the combined, right. Um, and these amounts are in, on that budget overview, the budget overview tool that we sent yeah. out that, they yeah. that you can right. read. So these, those amounts, that 68 cents includes all of this as if it was accepted. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of a amount that we're gonna subtract from. We're not we're not adding on top of the 68 cents for we're going to work backwards. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so right now I have it at 64 cents. Okay, which one is that again? Oh, so you have it at 64 cents by working back. Okay. Alrighty, are there any questions about any of these increases that are on here? Because I think we can probably vote for the hope for the package. Yeah. <laughs> like packages. And so anyway. Um, so we will go from um, so again, um, we're looking for an increased assistant treasurer collector, senior operator laborer, operator laborer with three plus years, operator with laborer with zero to three years, firefighter, board clerk, highway superintendent, um, right there. Okay. Um, I recall we've already discussed these in two meetings ago, I think. Yes. Yeah. We discussed a lot. Oh, okay. So um, do we have, can we put a motion on the floor? I move. Okay, so we are, we are voting on the total $7,590 to increase the rates for all of these positions. Stop, yeah. Donna? Yes. Yeah. Dan, Jim? Yes. Brenda? Aye. Aye. Okay. Passed. 
Yeah. All righty. Um, what's next? What's next? The last outstanding thing for us now would be COLA. COLA. Okay. And um, specifically, I'm seeing that the COLA recommendation, I want to get the black and white on this. Where is that exactly? Okay. Okay. Page, uh, um, okay. Um, so 7%. Seven point one percent is the request. Am I right? Yeah, correct. Brian? Yeah. Okay. Questions, comments from anyone concerning this. I thought I heard this select the other night discuss six three members of the select that board did. are here. Yeah. <laughs> six six was the number that the select board arrived at as the compromise between 7.1 and the 5.5 .5 New England COLA. Part of the reason being that in last year's budget, the COLA was shaved and even the six, depending on what number you take, you know, social security number is much higher, uh, that six is a reasonable number for a COLA in the year where the inflation was hitting eight percent Okay. All right. So that came up by six. That that was our. We would feel comfortable. That's with. what we would feel comfortable with. And that would bring the uh, fiscal year operating budget adjustment instead of sixty-two thousand six hundred fifty to. I just sort of quick and dirty it, but fifty-six thousand four hundred give or take. Had a question from the chief. I was just asked by Keith, he had to step out into another meeting. Yeah. He just wanted me to, to point out there's a paragraph in here about how the, the personnel committee came up with the 7.1%. I think it was the stuff before, but he just wanted me to make sure that that was pointed out that the difference between Social Security and then the commuter, uh, sorry, consumer price to fix. That's only the point of 7.1%. He just wanted me to add that as he was looking at before he had to leave. Thank you. Um, yeah. What what does this mean in raw dollars, um, Brian? Any idea? Yeah, I got um, on this budget overview tool. Thanks to Fred's suggestion. Yeah, it, it's a live sheet that we could punch in numbers. I can share that if you want. Okay. Can we see that? Yep. yep. So right now that this is what I try to keep this updated as, as the, our discussions. Yep. Um so right now I'm showing the seven point one. So what do you want me to we can plug in and that will change? Okay. Um what did we do last year? Last year we were three percent. Three. Why don't you put three in there and see what that looks like? Differential is 304, 780. Um, so this is the amount right here. That's that's what you're yeah, right yeah. So that's so the total adjustment will, will be 26,472.15 at 3%. Yep. And then again, when we go back to the 7 1, it's what? Is 62. So we have an increase in COLA, which understanding is baked into our cost of living. It does not come out. If next year the CPI drops, if next year this, this number stays, um, and it just gets added on to, understandable. Okay. Um, Okay. The um, 
I, uh, you know, I, I look at the, um, I look at the, uh, the towns around us and what they're recommending for their colas. And it ranges anywhere from two to six. Um, most of them are the two, they're in the two, three, four range. Um, so I, um, I called FERCOG and I spoke with um, a gentleman there by the name of Bob Dean. And Bob, Bob Dean was the individual that I was directed to when I told the receptionist what I was trying to find out. And what I was trying to find out was FERCOG is represents and understands most of the financial situation that we are in in Western Mass because um, that's their job. That's what they do. So I told him the situation that, that we had here. Um, he has a very similar, he was, he's actually on the, uh, either the personnel committee or the finance committee in Buffalo. In Buffalo, he's on the finance committee in Buffalo. Okay. And um, so we had that discussion. And um, so then I asked him, what about FERCOG employees? The people that work in the building, the people that you work with every day, what are you guys doing for Colts? And what did you use? He says, well, at the time they did it, they did, they had a CPI for New England at 5.1% at that time. Now, now that changes. That changes from month to month, okay? But the time they did it was 5.1. And their rationale was, well, that 5.1 includes, you know, outside of Boston, outside of New Haven, to, you know, the hills of Maine, to, you know, Florida, Massachusetts. So there was a very low, there was a very high, it came in at 5.1. They didn't think that they were on the upper half of that. So those people at Burkhag got a 4% cola, 4%. And that's how they move forward. They had every bit of information that everybody else has. Um, maybe more, I don't know. But that's what they settled in at, was 4%. Um, now, I know Tommy is not here, but he was part of the personnel committee and he voted against the 7.1. So in essence, um, there is that. So if you plug that 4% in, what does it look like? That's it right now. Okay. So it looks like the adjustment is 35,296. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we have any other numbers that you would like to see plugged in here? Six. Plug six percent. <laughs> so, so the adjustment is at fifty-two nine four four, which is a point away from seven. Okay, that's fine. All right. Okay, now moving forward, the discussion will be finance committee only, and the vote will be finance committee only. Um, so plug 4% back in there, please. Okay. Um, the discussion now is at that 4% level. I put it out to the, to the committee as to your thoughts. Can, in that can regard. I give comment, please? Uh, can you hold that off, please? Uh, it it would be relevant to what you're discussing right now. Fine. Okay. Go ahead. You, um, you ta we're talking about the FERCOG and 4% uh, from looking at a number of 5% for New England. In context, though, last year FERCOG got a 6% increase, and our employees only got a 3% increase. So at least part of what both the select board and the personnel committee's discussion wanted to do was to help repair the damage done by that uh, much smaller than inflation increase from last year. I think this is about employees 
morale. I think it's about employees that can just go apply to another town and get a better paying job. I think so, it's also about Joyce. Thank, thank you. And I think in many ways you are correct. And at the beginning, and my numbers are correct too. <laughs> okay. But at, at the beginning of the meeting, I think Donna put it wisely that we have to balance the needs of town employees with the needs of the people that own the town. And the people that own the town are also looking at the, the increase that they will have to uh, burden uh, upon themselves, uh, that we will burden upon them. So, I mean, that's that's the balance that that we have. Um, so let's let's discussion. look at it as a balance, though, and not just as a, I mean, it, it's really important. We just barely have a treasurer collector right now. If she went to another town, we don't have another candidate. We don't have enough money to pay somebody at the rate that they're paying in Belchertown. And we don't even have somebody who can come and train somebody. Okay. So please keep that in mind and be as generous as you can possibly find it in your hearts to be, especially in the context of what happened last year. If I can, I also just to follow up on what Joy said, put it in the context of the employee's point of view. Every year they're getting shaved a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more off of what inflation is taking out of their paycheck. Every single year, I've been oh on the God. finance committee. Finance committees come in under personnel's number. Keep shaving, keep shaving, and the people who are our employees keep falling further and further behind. Well, I, I, I guess I don't, I don't know them. I mean, I well. Inflation is a number, and what we're giving them as a COLA is a number, and it's lower than the inflation number year after year after year. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's yeah. no way they're getting ahead on this deal. But it, everybody they're also getting a, a wage increase. They, they get a wage increase. increase. Some are. Well, <laughs> some every are. year. Every year we have wage increases. Every year we have COLA increases. Every year we have an increase in our salary budget. Every year, the, the people of this town, the people who own this town, pay more and more every single year. Now, if we have to compete with everybody on earth, <clears throat> I don't. We do we, have to compete we, with. But well, we're not. In we're a, not competing with everyone on earth, but we're competing with towns. We're not in position in the to same do that. Position. And the towns around us are paying two, three, four. Maybe those one at six, and, I don't know. And some of them always, then it, it then it becomes if it, it really becomes a difficult task to justify really? the, 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 the environment that we live in. We live in a rural part of Massachusetts where the towns <clears throat> around us have two and three percent, four percent and, and They all have every town has a different financial situation. Right. We're in a situation, this town has essentially no debt. Right. Minimal debt. How come? This, because for this town has- We sold the cell power. Well, we bet that <laughs> house. <laughs> and, and we paid off the fires. There but, you go. There but you go. we've got essentially no debt. We've got other towns around us looking at- mm -hmm. Two and a half percent is looking for overrides. Mm -hmm. We're not close to that number. Yeah. <laughs> We're in a good position where we can afford to take care of our employees. We don't have to say, oh, they're giving 2%, so we should only give 2%. Let's do what's right for us, not do it because Buckland does it or Ashfield does it or Conway does it or someone else. Let's do what we want to do for our employees. And I, I would put in that the cost of living so, waiting for you to bite my head off again, pausing. Um, 
that the cost of living goes up every year, and that's why we all pay more every year. We pay more in taxes, and uh, salaries go up every year because a loaf of bread costs more every year. And we have to allow our employees to be able to survive, essentially. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I, um, I agree that we should do the best we possibly can. I think this is a sort of unusual year because someone told me the other day we have 28 employees. It's actually hard to count the number of employees we have because we have so many different categories. But And this year, um, we have market adjustments. I'm not sure how many people are in each job, but it could somewhere 15 to 18 of those 28 people are already getting a step up. And I don't, uh, I think that's good. My real point is that we don't want the 10 or 12 who happen not to be getting a market adjustment this year to be uh, short served. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it really is, it seems to be very unusual that, and it's partly the, the fire chief discussion because it's a bigger number, but very unusual that the market adjustment number is really close to the kind of COLA for the whole staff that we're talking, you know, it's, it just it just makes it harder to think about this year. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, well, um, Jim, do you have any, any, I just any wish, thoughts? I just wish that this consumer price index information, the social security information could be narrowed down to this Franklin County yeah. area. Yeah. The social security is nationwide. That's not specific for here. No. Right. But the even consumer price in index is New England. It's not Franklin County. Right. And yeah. That's what bothers me. Mm -hmm. um, we all want to is what small town we all know each other i wish everybody had 10 percent increases that's not you know <clears throat> we have to think of obviously the people that we employ but we also have to think about the people that we represent and the people that we represent mrs mcgill cutting on a fixed income down on wabash road you know uh, mr jones up on up on poplar hill who hasn't seen a social has seen one social security increase in 20 years. Um, and half of it got eaten up by his Medicaid. Um, you know, you gotta think of those people too. And one of the big issues that I have about the personnel com committee is that I and now I go back and I look at them, I look at everything, and it, and it reminds me of the school committee meetings. It, it's a club. Everybody kind of like, yeah, 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 that's good. Oh, I don't see any pushback. I don't see anybody saying no. I don't see anybody saying not this year. No, it's all, oh, that makes sense. Let's do that. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, it doesn't represent the people. It takes, it, it's a club where everybody's taking care of themselves. Look at your next school committee meeting. See how much pushback is there. There's none. The only only um, option we have is to take a look and see what makes sense. So what I'm going to say regarding this COLA right now, Brian, you said we had time. We have time to rethink what we want to do in relation to the total to the total percentage increase of 68 cents because we may be able to take from somewhere else and and feel better about the personnel recommendations if we take from somewhere else and reduce it um so that's the payoff you're not getting everything not getting 68 cents that's not happening we're not bringing that to the people everybody i've talked to says you know, I'm not happy with that. I would be more intended to go along with the, the wing of PPI, mm -hmm. which is 5.5%. Mm -hmm. That I think going along with what you brought up is, what is it costing us locally here right. for cost of living? Mm -hmm. 
and I think that this 5.5% is a more realistic number than 7.1 that we should be allowing for COLA fiscal year 24. You feel you would feel comfortable. What's 5.5 look at, look like on there? Someone read it. The change it changed, right? Mm -hmm. It did. Uh, How much is it? Sixty cents. Uh that's um It's forty eight five thirty two. Um what do you say? In 48, 532. So uh, how about I just speak to this, this the table we're looking at real quickly to provide mm -hmm. some context here. Yeah. Um Since looking you up. can't see it. <laughs> um so the tax rate and the tax levy, how we how we arrive at that is is based on a number of based on a number of things if we're comparing to last year. And one of the big differences between what we're showing here is in terms of the amount of um so let me show on the other side the amount of free cash that we threw at the tax levy last year. Yeah. Um sure. I gotta zoom this out for one second. So last year we threw last year we applied 255,000 mm -hmm. of free cash to reduce the tax levy. What we're doing right now is two hundred thousand dollars. Yep. So there's a fifty five thousand dollar difference. Um in that. Okay. I just wanted to throw it out there. So yeah, it, it's it's so sort of like adjust apples, to apples, but there's you know fifty five thousand of free cash in addition that we put towards reducing the tax levy last year. Well, May I ask a question? Question. Am I right that these calculations are predicated on the assumption that we are approving fully? Every departmental budget that's been presented, every capital request, this this rounds up everything that we have on the table. Almost. So no, not the right direction. What, what we're showing here is that there are items that have been taken out. Yeah. Um, because the select board has been willing. Right, because um, of the because of the COVID money. Right? With, yeah, with COVID yeah, money, no, so we that. take out the ambulance. Yeah. That's yeah. the stuff I'm ready. We take out the ambulance. Yeah. We take out the one-time employee separation payment. Right for the elementary school, we take out the frontier capital request, which hopefully will receive CPA funding. Um, and then there was a reduction that was spoken earlier in terms of the the reduction in hours for position. So, but everything everything that is on the table now <laughs> that is this calculation. That's the. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I just want to look at the record. So, you know, this is this this ends up coming down to the finance committee, but I'll I'll put it back on the select board. So the select board feels very comfortable with sixty eight cents a thousand. No, because there are other things such as the amount of uh, free cash that's going to go to all the okay. tax okay. increase. So you don't feel comfortable with six sixty eight cents. Okay, this 68 cents is, like, is, a, is a temporary number. It's not. Does that represent 7.1? No, no, no. That's the 68 cents tax increase. Tax increase per thousand. Every, if we didn't change a penny. If we put everything into it as is. As is. Which represents 7.1 COLA. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. With okay. That would also include keeping yeah. <laughs> close to half a million dollars in free cash. Yeah. yeah. Which we are not going to do. Which we are not going to do. That's so true. it's not. That's true. That was number. Right. Right. So, um, so we said we were comfortable with six percent. We had as, as a, for the amount of money. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Dan said five point five, um, and um, I was hedging towards four, um, but I was doing that um, prematurely because I think. You know, this is like a suit. Okay. And in the suit, you put things in and you take things out and you you adjust things to go along as to get to get the flavor that you want. And I think really we have to discuss this cola in context with other costs that are coming in and other um dollars that we have to reduce the tax levy. Um, and I don't see us doing that this evening. Um, 
how do you feel about that? You, Brian, you needed this evening. Um, I need I need one meeting where the finance committee votes, and then I need another meeting where I can go back and I can make all the adjustments to the budgets. So I need an extra meeting from when the finance committee takes that vote, really on the personnel stuff. So, so I'm what, gonna, okay. I'm, go, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm just going to say, it seems like we keep pushing things down the road. And um, I, all right, I'll just say what I think about this. I like Dan's idea. I came in thinking it should be four to five. Very sorry that in my first year I voted for the three percent, but that's what the consensus was, and I was a newbie, and I and I felt like it made sense. But anyway, where I am now is with Dan at five point five. I don't mind pushing it down the road, but it seems like everything that we're doing tonight we push down the road, and at some point. If there, if we can come to a consensus, it could be one less thing to push down the road. Yeah, um, I, I, that's a that's an excellent point. Um, the um, if we vote this tonight, we cannot adjust it downstream. When we look at the entire budget, then it's it, it becomes a fix. So um, it would be difficult. It would. It, it would it would make more work for me, but it, it would. It's possible, um, <laughs> but I would appreciate it if it's as firm as you can make it. <laughs> All right, um, five point five in in there, and um, you you feel good with five point five? I do. Yeah, feels good at five point five. Um, do I have a motion? On the... Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Can somebody make a motion? I will make a motion that we. Uh, this one to be worded just for coal, right? Correct. That we recommend a 5.5% coal increase for the next fiscal year. Second. Second. We'll vote. Donna? Aye. Dan? Dan? Aye. Jim? Yes. Aye. Yes. Okay. 5.5. Well, well, can I make one comment? You, you, can, you can certainly um, make a comment. Said. You expressed concern for Ms. Jones on Wabash Road and the other yeah, yeah. individuals. I would like to put in an advertisement for a split tax rate to take to help those people and so that we are not disadvantaging the great number of taxpayers at the expense of a very small number of people, whether it is in one case, the town employees, and in another case, the small businesses. Just an advertisement for something oh, that will come up may, later in the year. It may come up again. It will. It, it will come up know. every single year. It, it, it will it come, may up. come up again. Right. <laughs> okay. But, <laughs> no, it, we have to discuss it every year. At least yeah. it's a small yeah. business. So, so it's a <laughs> okay. It's quarter of eight. Brian, give us some direction. So let's talk about capital. Let's talk capital. And I'm gonna I'm gonna refer to the sheet here again. That's this is a sheet we can't read. Yeah. Okay. But you can read it on the screen, maybe. Okay, that would be good. So what I, what we're showing here on the table is that most of these capital items the select board is proposing to use uh coronavirus local fiscal recovery funds to cover. Yeah. Um, and they, there are some remaining funds in for the for the scans ambulance capital request, which I'm we're proposing to take out of the budget. Mm -hmm. Um, there's some leftover funds in the amount of uh, seventy one hundred dollars. Um, it's just that we could put towards the ambulance that the cost of the, the new ambulance that scans requested. Um, so all that's really remaining are the three items in in yellow. Mm -hmm. Um. It's uh, the new dump truck and plow replace the F550, the new pickup truck, the F150, and then there's a request for from the police department for the tasers, body cameras, um, and the software that's going to be mandated by the, okay. the post regulations. Right. Um, I just want to provide one bit of information about in relation to the F150. The, the town of Blackborn received what's called a Meta Grant, which is an energy technical assistance grant. Um, and we're going to be working with a consultant to uh, develop a plan to move our fleet from um, gas and diesel to electric. Um, so that should happen over the next probably 12 months. So we should have a plan as to how that how that will happen and what it will require in terms of you know infrastructure upgrades and 
So at this point, whole, the whole fleet. What do you What do you mean by the fleet? It'll they'll look at every single vehicle. Every vehicle that we have in town. Yeah. So, you're, so you're saying we should probably put off the F one fifty consideration until after we get that. That's input. I mean, that's that's one thought. Um, if the that that's one thought. If 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 we're going to have a better idea about how we should go about it later. Um, and that's 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 a possibility. I uh, I that sounds really sensible. I, I would on that subject. I'd like to go back to Jim Perkendall's discussion of four or six weeks ago mm -hmm. about trucks, and he mentioned particularly the the truck that the fire department has, uh, which we has, which we now realize goes out for eighty hours a year. That's we just heard John Hannon. Average of one hour per call. Mm -hmm. I guess I would like misunderstood. A year or over three years? A year. John said he went out. How many he calls? Said there were 80, uh, there are 80, 80 calls, calls a year. A year. Each calls about an hour. I wasn't clear. So I would, I, it's, more, it's probably way too late for this, but I would benefit from um, asking. The heads of the three departments, our departments are so tiny, that own vehicles, just to have a conversation and come back and report are there opportunities for sharing? I mean, mm -hmm. we know that the water department plows. That's, you know, for example, That's true. Um, just true. And maybe the answer will be no, but I think when our departments are so tiny to keep those blinders on, might not. At least there's a possibility there might be some opportunity for savings. These people are only going to cost more money. They mm -hmm. cost a lot to insure. Yep. You know, yep. Yep. Um, it's too late, though, isn't it? Well, I don't. I don't know that. Um, well, you're talking. You're talking about the F one fifty in this instance, right? Well, yeah, five fifty is not. It just happens to be the, right. Yeah. Not anything that we're really gonna yeah pair between departments. Yeah. Um. Well, I would be I would be very comfortable taking that eighty five thousand dollars off the board and waiting to see what the master plan is going to be and what that number is going to be for the master plan. Um. But um. I'll tell you that master plan better be affordable. Uh, it's grant funded. Uh, it's grant funded. It's great. Free. It's free to you. It's free, and it better be. It better be grant funded for the next twenty years. Oh uh, wait, the development of the plan. It's a great plan itself. Oh, oh, oh plan the, the vehicle that that's on you. Yeah, it's different. That's the old the old shell game. Yeah, we've seen that before. We're going to get the um, Yeah. I, I mean, just in context, just, um, you know, 85,000 dollars to run around town to throw the crap in the back and, and you know, do whatever. Um, I, I think that's ludicrous. I don't know for how many years. If you have the vehicle for 20 years. 20 years? That will, are you kidding? That's, it'll take, it'll, I, think, I think if I remember correctly, this one is. Like ten or twelve years old. This is ten years old. This one's ten. Okay. Okay. So ten years. Okay. Sorry. So Jim's assessment: mm -hmm. it'll take that truck eleven years to break even. No. With <laughs> after what Keith gave us two meetings ago. Yep. It's only eight, eighty thousand miles on it. So that he said eight thousand a year. That brings you up to sixteen years break even, not eleven. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you need. The electric vehicle to last 16 years to break even comparatively with the gas model. And um, wow, that is, um, as I said last time, that's amazing. The finances are not the only consideration in I gas versus electric. Before, well, I know that, but this is, that's, that's your job. See, the finance committee, finances are the only thing. So you come out to the taxpayers. Yeah, tell that to the taxpayer. I'll um, I'll gladly go to the taxpayers of this town and say, would you rather have an electric or a gas vehicle? I'll take their opinion on that. Well, we'll I, I think I think you'll have an opportunity to do that, <laughs> actually. Um, but not this year because we'll probably take the eighty-five thousand off the list. Are you talking about something? <laughs> so, so what I'm showing, 
on the screen right now that nobody can see because it's so small mm -hmm. is that if we did put if we did fund the hundred thousand for the f550 F out of free cash and then paid for the taser body camera software out of free cash this is the amount we would have remaining 233 155. okay um and we typically you, you know, take two well two, two two is already taken off that right and the two thousand here is already taken off that so this is a, a real number here so um whether we want to because we always try to target somewhere between 100 we, we try to keep between 150 thousand 200 thousand right in free cash so in free cash if either more could go to reduce tax levy or we could put some into some of our stabilization accounts you know those are decisions that we'll want to talk about we also need to talk to the chief about the timing on the tapes mm -hmm. etc yeah right. i was understanding that i've been confused between an upfront purchase and a subscription purchase, which will bring that cost down. Well, I don't know. Don't know. Um, what number is it? It's a thousand for the taser. It's like stuck in the 55 now. 60 in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be closer to 55. We, I mentioned that a couple of meetings ago. It's not going to be at, at 60. It's going to be closer to 55. So that's Five taken off of that. Okay. Um, I don't have a quote from them specifically saying if you pay up front, there'll be this much savings. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm looking at is the five year, over the five year period, there's a percentage increase each year. Mm -hmm. But then told that if we pay up front, then there isn't that increase for each year. Mm -hmm. But I haven't, I don't have that number there to give me a, a quote with that number. So this is the high end, is what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Could be lower. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, do you want us to vote on this? I, I mean, how, how do you feel about recommending the, the that much in free cash for those two items? The for the F five fifty and the what's left in the clear money? Uh, this uh, after this is spent uh, one hundred thirty thousand. So there's two. There's so there's two hundred sixty now, and the select board decided to. Do half and half. So we need to we need to obligate the funds by next year. So we have one more fiscal year. Okay, one more fiscal obligate. year. So, so after these, it'll be one hundred thirty thousand left okay. remaining. Okay. And are we? There was a discussion about the um, the ambulance. Yep. Is that already? That's in the CLF part. Right. That that's so, in. So that's existing. That's yep, existing funds, and okay. then the remainder being with CLF RF money. And I'm not. I'm not 100% sure that's going to go through this year, to be honest with you. Okay. What I hear from our neighboring towns is, is okay. correct. Because um, if that if 40, whatever, 46 is our amount, mm -hmm. our friends up north is done. So, okay. Um, Great. At least there's a little bit of pushback um, there. But it's not, we're not touching free cash. So, and it's existing funds. So, it's not like we need to generate that money you know, from the tax levy. So. Okay. All right, so we're go, go ahead. Sure. To the Christian Lane um, so we got a an additional estimate, and it was very significantly higher. Higher than one hundred and twenty five. Oh no, no, one hundred twenty four seven hundred. Okay. What it was originally the original amount we had from 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 talking with them uh, with with time bond was it was closer to thirty thousand, but I I think we weren't taking into account. Um, getting through permitting and final design um, originally. So um, we we sort of struck that out as not something that we should spend, um, you know, free cash on. Okay. And, and we've actually applied for a grant to, uh, to pay for that. So. Um, so you'd like us to recommend? Um, we have one more meeting. We we have a meeting on the eighteenth. Yep. And you can take final votes on capital then, but if you give me a sense of what what you're thinking, that would be helpful. I, I, I think, well, why don't we go around the table and we'll do, how do you feel about the new dump truck and plow at $100,000? And this is, this is just a sense. This, is the, you, this, the, this isn't a vote, okay? Just how you feel about it, okay? All three of them or just no, just the first the 
Well, you can you talk to you can talk to the dump truck. You can talk to the tas tasers okay. because right now I have a feeling that we're going to put the F one hundred and fifty on hold until we have a master plan, which is coming sooner than later. Some sometime in the next year, maybe <laughs> and after this consultancy. Yeah, I don't comes back. With it. I don't remember if the board has ever voted on that, mm -hmm. um, but. Yeah, I don't remember if the boys have voted on that. Okay. Um, if we have them, we will. Right. Selectman. Has, has Keith given any indication of the time frame? Like when our crews are we supposed to have already had, they, they told us 40 to 52 weeks. Is there any lead time like that for the pickup truck? Something I don't know. If lead time. Days. Something had a 700 day yeah. lead time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. About two years. Yeah. 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 So we could, you know, so if we front the money, this comes out. Thanks for tax money and everything. Well, that's that's pretty much where we're at now. We're trying to give Brian a, a sense if we feel positive about the dump truck and positive about the tasers, then it'll give him a better idea of how um, the whole um, budget is going to look for our next meeting because at the next meeting we'll take a hard look at what that tax impact will be and then we can start shaving. Sounds good. Okay. So how do you feel about the dump truck and the okay. tas tasers? Yay or nay? Yeah. Okay. Yay or nay? Yes. 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 Yeah. Good. I feel good about those two pieces as well. So the five of us feel good about that. On the April 18th meeting, which is finance committee only, um, select vote, it'll, it's public meeting, you can come, there'll be a public comment time, so you're more than welcome, uh, but it'll be finance committee only and um, we will be voting on the entire budget at that time. Okay, we good? Dan, Dan, look at the clock. Right on. How much time, my man? We got three minutes left. All right, I won't keep you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes. I second. I second. Move the adjourn.